All right, go move. For Dear Audrey, I think that the reason for animation was total freedom. Animation allowed us to play around. Experiment. To be able to do things like add rain to a shot or add as many extras as we wanted to in a shot. Get strange and creative, impressionistic. Make up whatever we wanted to, in whatever style we wanted to do it in. This was actually the first test we ever did. We developed the first test that really developed the entire look of the film itself. We really didn't want it to look like a cartoon. We wanted to have a sense of emotion and reality. My son was 18 years old at the time. It was just me and him. It was during the beginning of lockdown. And the first test I shot was with him. We were kind of astounded at how similar Felix actually looked like Martin when Martin was young. He had curly hair, similar facial structure, and thought that he could actually be a perfect stand-in for Martin. Yes, some of the references that we began to use of Martin as a young man, but we really wanted to get the spirit of Martin. I hired an illustrator and artist to paint over top of the video frames to try and alter the frames that we shot to much more match Martin's likeness. Making him a little bit older, making him a little slimmer, a little gaunter because he had been in Vietnam and been through a lot. It's a very cool scene. We knew that painting over video was part of the process that was going to work. And I thought, oh, Jean Mals Park had picnic tables. We could easily do quick and dirty, lie him on a picnic table and have him flying through the sky. No! It's very exciting. It's my first time being in a car crash. At the very beginning when I'm moving in, I'll say, break. That's when you're shattering through. And I want you to be like, like shocked and then like wonder this like this divine moment almost where i'm like seeing a light in a way and action and break head up go on Head up. We went and shot footage of him at high speed. And then sent that footage to the director so it can be edited, time shifted, speed up, speed down, to really get the look that we were looking for for that sequence. Arms up more. Very ethereal and flying stuff. 
We then brought that into uh, 3D software and started to develop the environments. We also needed Felix to be able to crash through glass, so we began to copy Felix's motion with a 3D model so that we could actually use that 3D model to really break through real virtual glass. Having everything in 3D allowed us to do approvals too. Is the camera working good? Do we want the actor to be further away? Speed things up, slow things down, see if it's working or not before a single frame gets painted on in 2D. If we had have just gone into 2D, the moment we wanted to change or add or take away something, we're redrawing everything over and over and over and over. And doing that would be an incredible amount of money and time. So as much of the guesswork finished in this 3D environment, the better. And really focus on style and look rather than having the animators have to worry about the speed of things or the perspective of things or any of that kind of stuff. That was already sorted out in 3D. They just had to draw over top of what we did. Developing the look of the animation, I really wanted it not to look cartoony. I really wanted a certain realism and spirit of real people. This is interesting because it shows first that we not only shot Felix, but then we tracked in Martin's face from photographs. Throughout the film, we're cutting from real photographs or real film footage of Martin to an animated sequence of Martin. So it had to look as much like Martin as the film footage. So we would actually take Martin's photographs you don't painstakingly track it onto the actual face itself so that the animators didn't have to try and build that likeness. All they had to do was trace on top because it was Martin's face. And that was done with as many characters as possible. This is a scene of Jack, Martin's father, heading towards the hospital in the middle of a snowstorm to see Martin, his newborn child. We found a park that had sand, which was a volleyball court. The sand definitely enhances the actor's performance as far as being in snow. All of the cameras that were actually shot for real, we did 3D camera tracking in 3D space. And then we had a camera that was literally in the virtual world. There's enough features, for instance, marks on poles, features on the ground, features in the background that we can track. All of these points are features on the ground, and we extract an actual 3D camera from shots. And then virtual environments, again, were built. Virtual snow, virtual environments. And once that's done, that was then sent out to the animators to draw on them frame by frame, to bring it back to 2D. At the end of that, we added swirling snow. We really wanted the snow to look impressionistic, similar to a Matisse painting, and to have a painterly style. Not really having perfect snow, or even perfect motion of snow, but having the swirl somewhat exaggerated. It being stylized. To get that, I built these geometric ribbons, these swooping shapes on different layers and animating brush-based textures through these ribbons. 
that layered over top of the actual footage itself. On the lapel, like everything just seems right. Shift, tilt your head, chin down. Shooting the actors in environments, then tracking those cameras in three dimensional space, cutting those actors out, and then putting in virtual environments, and then being able to move around those environments, doing that all in 3D before going to drawing allowed us the ability to really be creative and invent and have fun with cameras and try out different backgrounds and environments and play with all kinds of elements that allowed us a lot of freedom to weave a creative style throughout the film that I don't think has been exactly done the way we did it. I think that was the point, was trying to do something new.